In the project management world, there's a saying known as the iron triangle, cheap, fast, or good, pick two. If you want something done quickly and cheaply, don't expect it to be good. If you want it to be good and cheap, don't expect that to come fast. And if you want it to be fast and good, well, that's definitely not gonna be cheap. And I love this because it just perfectly captions our plight as composers, producers, freelancers really. Sadly, both you and I know that in order to survive, we need to be able to deliver all three every single time. A product of good quality, delivered in a timely fashion, delivered on budget. So how do I achieve all three? Well, in a single word, workflow. Muscle memory, trial and error, iterative improvements to create something that works beautifully for you. And this isn't gonna come straight away and it's taken me many years to get to the point where this seems to be the best for me right now. Now an often trodden path in this domain is to create templates and for a long time I had this massive 750 track master template with all of the instruments I'd ever need, all of the articulations. But what I've realized in part in preparation for this video is that actually I don't use many of my sounds most of the time. I probably use 5% of my sounds 95% of the time, maybe even 99% of the time. So while the master template was great, it became quite clunky and it restricted my movement and my freedom to create something spontaneous. I needed a blank project so that I could reach for the violin or reach for a trumpet rather than just ticking the little trumpet box and enabling the track. I wanted to feel freer than that. So that's exactly what I've done. And while this may look like a blank project template, there are actually loads of things built in under the hood to make it really easy for me to get started without having to do the same three minutes of practice every single time. The first thing is my click track. So you'll see here that in all tracks, I've got my click here, there's no output there, and it's being sent at 100% volume to bus 256. So this means that when I want to adjust the volume of the metronome, instead of having to go into record metronome settings, I don't have to do that anymore. I literally just change the volume here. And I find that actually around minus eight dB is a good level for me. So maybe as an iterative improvement to this blank project template, I might actually fix that to minus eight decibels. Then I've got two reverbs. I've been kind of going back and forth on reverbs for a while now, but this is my all time favorite. It's the Cinematic Rooms Professional by Liquid Sonics. And I'm gonna make a whole video review about this because it's a really, really fantastic reverb. I've got this bright chamber, which I've slightly modulated. It's a two and a half second reverb. That then gets sent to my rear bus setup, which is a uh, mid side compression. So it gives it a little bit more width. And I use the CLA 76 for that. And then I've got a second reverb, which is the FabFilter Pro R. So this is about two and a half seconds again, but it's a slightly different tail, and the two of them work really, really well together. You'll notice this is on bus 30, this is on bus 31, and this is on bus 32. The reason for this is because these are the bottom buses of this section. Carrying on, you'll see that I have no icons. I know my keyboard shortcuts now, and I keep them like that. It keeps a nice clean workflow for me. I've got my secondary tools set to the scissors, which we can adjust here if we want to, but that's what I use every single time. It starts on bar five, because that's where the piece starts. My click track is already enabled with the sound that I particularly like. And then in my mixer, I've got three lines of text, no icons anywhere in the project. I really don't like icons. They take up too much space. And uh, I've also got my master bus here with all the tracks turned off for now, but at the end of a mix, I'll engage them and then start to tweak from there. I've also got sound ID at the bottom, which is what I use to monitor my headphones through so that I have a perfectly flat set of speakers. The final thing here is my VU meters, which I use to monitor while I'm working just to check if things aren't too loud or too quiet. Once I'm in this blank project template, I'll begin by sketching ideas using a keyboard of some sort, normally the Keyscape Wurlitzer well, 200A. And a quick tip, I would suggest not using instruments that you plan to use in your arrangements because you want it to really stick out of the mix so that if you're playing things alongside it, you can hear quite clearly what's going on in your original sketch versus the final thing. So that's why I don't use pianos as my sketching tool. But when I do start to load instruments in, I don't do this.
No, I use presets for instruments. And I want to show you around because this is something that I'm really excited about. It's early days, but I think, I think you'll agree that this works really, really well. So rather than going in here, clicking on the instrument, instead I can click on setting and I can go down to my DK faves. Or if I don't want to do that, I can actually just search for them here in the library view. So for example, say I want the violin ones and I want the legato. I just double click like this and this will open the BBC Symphony Orchestra first violins legatos. So when I click on this, you can see that I've got my mix already, mix one, which is my favorite mix for this instrument. It's just a single legato patch. And I've also got my EQ that I use every single time. So with just one click, I've got everything I need to get started. And it also fills out the track name as well. So if I show another one, here is here in pianos, I've got the grand, which is one of my favorites. I just double click on that. And as you can see, it's got the contact instance there loaded. So I'm going to do this for all of the instruments that I use 95% of the time. Um, I'm not going to do this for everything. This is just my favorites. And of course, if I want to reach out and get more sounds, I can. And once I like a sound, I go here, I click save channel strip setting as, and then I go into my favorites and save it into the folder there. Now, if I knew that I wanted to use some brass instruments, it would still be quite time consuming to click on each of the instruments. So I also have some patches loaded for various track stacks. So as an example here, if I create a new instrument and I go to user patches, there aren't as many of these yet, but I'm gonna fill them out. Let's click on BBC brass. This will load up all of the brass instruments that I use 95% of the time in the BBC SO. And once that's loaded in, you can see here that I've got my bussing as well. So this is the mix that I would typically have for brass. And then if we click in here, you'll see it also has the send amounts preloaded, ready to go. I've got all of my EQ settings as well. It's literally one click to get everything that I would have got from the master template, but without kind of clogging up the space here in my project window. Now say I've created a few tracks here in a project and I know that I need to group them together. My favorite way to work is by using track stacks, which is basically auxiliary tracks, but it's also nested into folders, which is really useful. So here I now have an option to choose which plugins I want to use. And for the most part, I would start kind of reaching for various plugins. But as I say, 95% of the time, I reach for the same tools every time. So I actually have a channel strip setting here called blank channel strip. And when you click on that, it loads up my presets that I use every time. So we've got corrective EQ, my favorite bus compressor, my favorite artistic EQ, and then a tape machine on the way out. And that is a really, really quick way to get started. I can open it, I can make my changes as I want to. But if I did know what I was using, say it was three string tracks or something, I could click on this and you might've seen, I can actually just click string mix there and this sets me up with the plugins that I typically use when I'm mixing strings to give me that sonic aesthetic. Now this way of working works really, really well for me. And one of the reasons for this is because I work on multiple machines. I've got a laptop at home and then I've got my Mac mini here at the studio. Now, in order for me to stay in sync, something that you can do, which I'd highly, highly recommend is basically this is where it stores your settings. It's in your user profile, music, and then audio music apps. And it has to be here because that's how Logic knows where to find all of your things for the library. However, you can see here that I've got my channel strip settings, which if I click on that and go into instrument, and then here's my DK faves. You can see that this isn't actually a folder. This is an alias. And when I double click on this, this is actually going to a folder that I have on iCloud Drive. And this means that wherever I am, if I'm on my laptop at home, I discover a new set of sounds while I'm on a train or something, I can save them to iCloud. As soon as I get back here to the studio, they're already loaded into my blank project template. And this means that I don't have to write over projects. It means that I can remove stuff once a month if I want to. I can maybe move it out of the iCloud drive into a kind of an overflow car park full of samples that I use a lot, but not as often as the DK faves. This for me is an absolute game changer. And if you're wondering how much information this is, if I click on the space bar here, you can see that my DK faves currently take up 3.7 megabytes of memory. So really not much. Now where track laying is concerned, I know people are often really bothered about this. All you have to do in Logic, and it's really quite simple, is click on the track stacks that you've got. You don't have to close them like this, but have them selected. Go to File, Export, 
two tracks as audio files and it will bounce everything that was within that group. So if you decide that you don't want your reverbs included, you just drag them outside. But if you wanted this reverb to be within the string bus, this would now export with reverb included. This is a really, really quick way of working. It doesn't require you to do it in real time. You can do this offline and it literally bounces from bar one all the way up to the end of your project. So of course you can move the end of your project depending on how much of the project you want to have bounced out. In a future video, I'm gonna show you how I use this optimized workflow to create stems for projects, sending stuff off to mixing engineers, and generally how to manage your files because I don't think any of us prepare to be librarians, but somehow we end up with so many files as composers, producers, and musicians. If you've got any questions about the topics talked about today, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll read them, reply to them, or address them in a future video. Thanks so much for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.